Hi, this is Roger Infin Finland and today we're going to take a look at the Cerui 50mm anamorphic lens for Micro Four Thirds. This whole video is filmed using the Cerui 50mm anamorphic lens for Micro Four Thirds mounted in the Panasonic G9 and being recorded into Atom and Atomos Ninja 5. So for the impatient ones, this is the only way to get a true anamorphic lens without having to fiddle with adapters or anything like that for under a thousand euros or dollars or actually for under three thousand euros or dollars uh, it covers APS-C, Super 35 and Micro Four Thirds and most of all flares there you go and now for those of you with a bit more patience let's go to some more details so what is briefly an anamorphic lens? well it's a lens that has a special front element that stretches the image in the horizontal direction this particular lens is a 1.33 anamorphic lens, so that's the ratio that it does the stretching. There are lenses that are 1.2 or even 2.0, and that's the amount of stretch in the different directions. This particular one, it squeezes the image into a 16.9 sensor, and when we de-squeeze it, we get an aspect ratio of 240 to 1. In practice, maybe a little bit easier way to understand it if I talk about focal length as in the equivalent of field of view, this is a 50 millimeter lens for micro four thirds. So when it comes to equivalency to full frame in terms of field of view, this should be equivalent to 100 millimeters. But because it has the anamorphic factor, it's equivalent to a 100 millimeter lens in terms of full frame field of view in the vertical axis, but to a 75 horizontally. This test that I'm showing right now, we're done with this zoom lens as the 12 to 60 f2.10 to f4 from Panasonic. And of course, I cannot be super mega precise choosing the 50 and the 75, but hopefully it gives you a good idea of what is the equivalency of field of view vertically and horizontally in a micro four thirds camera. Because it does squeeze the image in the horizontal axis by a factor of 1.33, it means that in your camera, you're gonna see it actually very much squeezed. So unless your camera does have this squeezing option, I believe that GH5 does it and the Pocket 4K with the newest firmware does it also. There's plenty of external monitors that do it. Um, otherwise, you're going to see the image looking a bit funky, so everything is a bit elongated. However, 1.33 is not such a huge squeeze factor that it's not possible to frame properly by using the normal monitor. The G9 does not have a squeezing option, and I've been just framing looking at the squeezed image, and it's definitely more than possible. One thing that you will want for sure is have a camera that does have focus picking, because it's a fully manual lens, so if you want to know how you're focusing, then picking will be very helpful. So what is the difference between this squeezing and this squeezing and just adding black bars? Well, one of them is that if you're adding black bars, you're missing information. Now I'm just using the whole sensor and then doing the squeezing in post, but I have the whole information of the camera. The other one is the character of the lens. They are quite special looking and they're a bit different. And one of the special characteristics of anamorphic lenses is the shape of the bokehballs, which instead of being balls, they do have a novel shape, but most of all flares. These horizontal flares are the trademark of anamorphic lenses. And if you've seen any J.J. Abrams movies, you know what I'm talking about. Right now, the Cerui 50mm anamorphic lens is mounted into Panasonic G9 for two reasons. One is because the Pocket 4K is actually go on its way to maintenance. We're going to talk about that later in some other video. And the other one is because I believe that it has a perfect pairing for this lens. And I'm going to tell you why. One of the reasons is because of the size. So this lens is small for being an anamorphic. I know that it's big and heavy compared to some of the really lightweight primes for Micro Four Thirds. Think of the 25mm 1.7 from Panasonic or some of those pancakes, but it is comparable to the heavier primes like the Voidlanders 0.95 or the Olympus 1.2 Pro lenses. It's also very similar in size to some of these zoom lenses, like for instance, this 12 to 60 f2.8 to f4. It's about this long anyway, and it weighs a little bit over half a kilo which makes it still very, very portable. Because of its size, it means that it can be used handheld, but because it's a fairly long focal length for micro four thirds, that can be quite unstable. But thanks to the fantastic IVs in body image stabilization of the Panasonic G9, we can do things like this. <laughs> The build is super good and super solid, it's all metal, the whole lens is metal, the focusing and aperture rings are metal, the mount is obviously metal as well, and it feels very very solid in hand. 
the focus ring and the aperture rings are very very smooth one complaint maybe would be that the aperture ring is really really close to the body so for people that are more into cinema rigs that would like to add gears to the aperture ring i think it's going to be really really difficult because it's very very close to the body and the fact that it has a very long throw and very small focusing ring and the click aperture it really signals that this is obviously a video centric lens and i would say it gets towards the category of cinema lenses but then if that is true and this wants to be a cinema lens it should have geared focus rings and here aperture rings think about the maker lenses that i reviewed recently i believe that now they're going to be releasing the newer anamorphic lens from cw the 35 millimeter that one will be coming with some gears that you can add on top of the focusing and aperture rings um, by yourself and that will be part of the package but for this 50 millimeter what i did was um, order these gears from followfocusgears.com paid for it nobody's sponsoring the video but it was a very easy to deal with them but the shipping was super fast and I got to choose the gears of color orange, which is my favorite, so plus for them. It slides very easy, it's very easy to install and still it doesn't wiggle or anything. So, so these are some gears that I would definitely recommend for this silly 50mm anamorphic lens. You've seen my reviews of the makers and you know that I do appreciate when lenses have very close focusing distance. This is not one of them. The closest focusing distance is 85 centimeters, which is not very close. It still allows you to do things like this. <laughs> But then we can also ask a very stupid question. Can you vlog with it? The short answer is no. The long answer is that this is a 100 millimeter equivalent, at least on this direction. We're really, really heavily testing the in body image stabilization. I have my arm fully stretched. This thing is on top of a pixie. Now I'm even walking with it. I'm probably gonna get injured. I think that this is going to be tennis elbow at least so most people complain about what 24 millimeter equivalent that is too short for vlogging here you go 100 millimeters equivalent anamorphic vlog cannot do this <laughs> if you just saw that disaster you know that now you cannot vlog with this optically it's very good it's sharp without being clinically sharp I don't think that you would be buying this kind of lens, which obviously it's going to be for having a really cinematic look, which are never super sharp anyway, for its like sharpness in modern terms, but I think that it's more than enough. There's plenty of reviews online that says that this lens is too sharp, or that it says that it's too soft, so what I'm going to say is that I'm sure that it's good enough. So what do you get? You get for less than $700 or euros a true anamorphic lens for your Micro Four Thirds or APS-C cameras. I believe it's available for Sony, E-mount and Fuji X at least which is very, very well built. It's optically very good. It has true anamorphic ratio, true anamorphic characteristics, and it's very easy to use. This is a specialized lens, probably it's not for everyone, but if you're even mildly interested in getting into anamorphic lenses, or you want a cinema lens that is gonna give you a different feel and flares, then you will not find anything close to this in the market. So what will be my wish list for the next version of this or a different kind of anamorphic lens? I know that Siri was going to release a 35mm, but if you've seen some of my videos, you know that my favorite focal length is the 45mm equivalent in full frame. So that would mean that it would be a 22 or 23mm for micro four thirds. And that would give me then about 45-ish on the vertical axis and then about 30 or so. In the horizontal and i think that would be the perfect focal length for me and finally like they're doing already i believe with the 35 millimeter that's going to be released soon come the lens should come already with focusing gears and also gears for the aperture ring and this one should be a little bit farther away from the body so that it's a bit easier to manually rig all right so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click like and subscribe and we're going to see you soon for some more content.